The Ravens are bringing back Calais Campbell. They just brought back Josh Bynes the day before. There's been other veteran smart signings, at least talked about Melvin Gordon. Um, I decided to throw together some plays of Calais Campbell from 2021. Of course, we know he only had one, one and a half sacks last year, has spent a significant amount of the time of the season, I thought, injured or at least being somewhat hampered by injuries. I like to utilize film to accompany you know, the videos that I make, because I don't feel like my, my commentary is entertaining enough in and of itself. Here's Calais Campbell line up in a three technique against the Bengals. He does get a sack here. I think he splits it with um, Ty Bowser, but I could be wrong. I don't feel like my content is entertaining enough for you guys to, to be a standalone um, and, and not have some film associated with it. So I like to show some stuff that he does and, and that impacts the game. I know that, you know, people talk about, oh, it's the modern game and how does Calais Campbell help us there? He only had a sack and a half last year. Look, football is football. It's the same. It's, it's always going to be the same. There may be more spread formations. There may be more rules that influence the pass game. But it's about blocking, tackling, and beating the man in front of you. And Calais Campbell can do two of those things really well. He can beat people in front of him, especially when he's single blocked. It's an interesting look that they have here. They're bringing Harrison off the edge, and Calais Campbell's in a tight three technique. He just dominates the guy lined up across from him, and that's something he can do. He can win matchups one-on-one. -on -one. He, coll he collects people sometimes. I'm going to show you these two plays, and these are back-to-back -back plays against Denver in week four. Back-to-back -back plays. Old man Calais Campbell, 34 at the time, you know, pushing the, 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 the offensive lineman backwards here, getting penetration. Harrison does a great job of collisioning this, this Z, not letting the space be expanded. There's also a great job by McPhee who misses the tackle in here, but Calais Campbell is there to help figure you know, finish him up and then hammer the guy down to the ground. The very next play, which I think was a second and long, second and 12, Calais Campbell is here as a nose. This is our, like, dime package, whatever you want to call it. And watch the Broncos run a, a, a little screen down to the bottom side of the screen. Calais Campbell runs the perfect track, perfect path, great angle, to end up making the tackle on what, you know, is essentially a Z screen, even though the guy's lined up on the line of scrimmage. Just a little tunnel screen out there to the field, and Calais Campbell tracks it down. That was a third down. My apologies. I think it's a great signing by the Ravens. The salary point that was described, um, awesome. Awesome deal. Kind of felt like this was the right thing to do, just like the Josh Bynes deal. You know, are we looking to get – people say, like, are we looking to get younger on defense? Just get better. Hell, who cares about their age? I'm, I'm not an ageist. I don't care if he's 45. If he's 45 and he can play – let him play. Calais Campbell kind of reminds me of George Foreman. A little um, a little rugged sometimes. Maybe not as quick, but incredibly powerful. If you're a boxing fan or you know a martial arts fan at all, you've heard about George Foreman having the heaviest hands ever. Watch this club. That will make Reggie White proud right there. The, the man can play football. And when he's got people one-on-one, -on -one, he can win matchups. Now, does he win them all the time? I don't know what his pass rush win rate is. I can barely even say those four words, you know, together. I don't give a shit. You can look them things up. You can quote them to me if you want. Calais Campbell can play football, and you can see it if you watch the film. I don't have conversations with people who don't watch film and, and just want to quote stats because it's, worth, it's worthless. They're just going to – all they're doing is regurgitating stats to you. That's all they're doing. I mean, you can see he does get to the quarterback. Most of these plays come from five games that I picked, and and I do show you the most of the plays from the same game in a row. I was trying to get this out as quickly as possible. It's when Drew Locke is in the game. Bridgewater had already been put out of the game, unfortunately, when he was hurt. Somewhat similar move, a little bit quicker with the club. And then a swim over the top of it. That's a six foot eight, 330, 340, maybe even 350-pound man with the club. And then the swim over the top of it. Keeping his feet. Yeah, he's a little off balance. I would expect that. You know, he doesn't hit the quarterback, doesn't sack the quarterback. But it's not always about sacks and hits. I am so glad they got him back. They got Josh Bynes back. They're leaders. They're winners. They're guys that know how to keep the locker room in order. I shouldn't say the locker room. They know how to keep the defense in order. They're leaders. Uh, love the signing. You know, if he was healthy, I'd like to see them bring Pernell McPhee back. But understand, he did not have anywhere near the impact last year that Josh Bynes did, let alone Calais Campbell. Uh, difficult man to block one-on-one. -on -one. Difficult guy to deal with. 
in those situations. And I think the film shows that. Huge proponent of the signing. Underrated. Is it a huge, is it a, a big off season? No, every move he makes doesn't work. I try I tried to show this one. Everything he does doesn't work, clearly. There was plenty of times where he did not win his matchup one on one. That's why I showed this one. There, there was probably six or eight other plays I could have shown where one like that one. But but you don't want to see that. You know, you don't want to see that. What does he do? Now, I just showed you some pass rush stuff because I figured I would appease the people who are only concerned about the pass game. If that's all you're concerned about, you got the wrong perspective on football, man. This shit still matters. He's in a three technique here, and it always will. He's in a three technique, and, and McPhee is the edge player. They're going to do a great job between them. One thing that, that Campbell does is he eats up blocks, but then when the, uh, I believe it's tackle here, combos up to the second level, that's when it's like this sense of timing of when to shed and then and then try to displace the guy and make the tackle and that's an acquired skill I, I cannot I cannot exactly like I mean I've never been six foot eight 330 pounds but I understand what a defensive tackle is trying to do he can't exactly immediately excuse me he can't immediately shed this he's got to kind of absorb the blow stand his ground a little bit now there's you know there's old school techniques you can do if your ass is getting moved moved backwards sometimes you just gotta take a knee and create a pile but they're trying to combo up they're trying to combo up absorb the blow don't give don't give too much ground and then once he once he combos up now go ahead and shed him and Calais Campbell knows that instinctively or intuitively I mean at this point at his age it doesn't even have to be coached really uh, not gonna practice a guy like that I'm not gonna practice him every day of the week he has an impact. Even when he's not making the play, I mean, how many guys would even try this shit? How many guys would try this swim? I wouldn't teach a guy to do that when he's going to get double teamed. Wrap the tackle up with his arms, fend him off, and then you know he doesn't make the tackle, but he allows other people to do so, and that's what you want those guys to do. Here, here, this is a perfect example. This is the best example I can give. I probably should have done this one first. You see him getting combo blocked, and then look at what's happening. He's getting combo blocked right here or doubled. You know, most people call it double team all the time. A lot of times, guys, double team and combo is different. If it's combo, the idea is that the, the line, one of the linemen will combo up to the second level. But Brandon Williams is here one-on-one, -on -one, getting a one-on-one. -on -one. Josh Bynes is here absolutely unblocked. Let's rewind it to the beginning. As you know, if you watched my videos um, all season long, the Steel, I believe the Steelers put us in 11 personnel hell. What I mean by 11 personnel hell is, is you've got a running back and a tight end and then that's creating, that's forcing us to be in our four-two nickel. So they they're a man up here, no matter no matter how you cut it. Damn, they're damn near two man up. You know, if you count the quarterback, which we don't here because it's Ben Roethlisberger, he's not going to run. But even still, they're going to have trouble. They're going to, you know, typically you would combo up, you know, combo up. They don't here. They end up basically single blocking Williams trying to send the backside guard up to uh, Queen initially, or immediately, excuse me, and the tackle stepping out to Houston. What that does is it, cr it creates a problem for them. Since they didn't combo both the tackles, we've got a completely unblocked inside linebacker, a guy who's winning his battle one-on-one, -on -one, and those things are happening because a guy like Calais Campbell can absorb these double teams, take up space, and not get blown off the ball two, three, four yards downfield. Just a great player. I think he's a Hall of Fame player. Similar concept here. He's in a, a little bit wider three technique. His right eye is here, and the outside, his inside eye is, is there, and the outside eye of the tackle is there. So you've got a, a significant amount of space there. The better the player, the further, the wider you can line them up, because then they can do anything they want to do. The worse the player, the tighter you want to line up on line up. So to me, this tells you how damn good he is because he's lined up wide as hell, giving the, the tight end a, a, a great excuse me the tackle the right tackle. A great angle to go get him. They try to double team him. A pin pull, basically. Tight end and the tackle down on him. And the guard pulled out. He just clogs the hole up. And again, Brandon Williams single blocked. Single blocked, able to close in and make the tackle with Calais Campbell here. Just just a, a great, a fantastic football player. Fun as hell to watch. I suspect he's probably fun as hell to practice with. 
and 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 if you got the chance to talk ever talk football with him, I suspect he'd be fun as hell to to talk football with. Rarely see him in this position uh, a five technique. Now they they've gone tackle over. This is a this is a sixth offensive lineman that the Chargers have on. So he's in a five technique, but it's essentially the same as what I just showed you, a three technique. And you see him, he knocks the snot out of this sixth offensive lineman and just discards him. I hope I rewound. Yeah, I did. I hope you you appreciate this as much as I do. Watch this violence and just shedding what looks to me to be like a 330-pound man. Look, Marlon Humphrey almost gets taken out by the offensive lineman that Calais Campbell throws. Look at this. Look how far away that offensive lineman helmet is from Marlon Humphrey. I believe it's Marlon Humphrey. Watch, watch that lineman get thrown. And almost runs into Marlon Humphrey because he's so out of control because he just got tossed. Just a fantastic football player when healthy. I believe he was extremely healthy early on. Somewhere around the Viking, I think I don't think he played in the Vikings game, but I might be wrong. There was a there was at least one injury that occurred, uh, uh, maybe two. Again, here he is in a five technique against the Colts. You've got a tight end, so he's you don't line up inside of the tight end. He's technically outside shade of the left tackle here. Neither one of them blocks him, and he gets a tackle for loss along with Brandon Stevens. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If I'm overstating it, I think Pierce, Matabike, Campbell, and then maybe a guy like a Travis Jones uh, or someone drafted, you know, is going to make this deep, this front group really, really powerful and and elite. As, as assuming that we get an edge rusher in the first, you know, first round. Here he is in a in a in a three, a little bit tighter alignment, kind of a, a cocked alignment. Doesn't make the tackle, and in fact ends up on his back. But look at what he understands. He understands there's a time for me to just compress this gap. I don't have to jump in here. I mean, and, and this goes without saying. Like, you don't even have to talk about this with people that have actually been around football. I don't have to go crazy here. I'm just going to compress this gap. I'm playing my gap. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the gap inside of me, and I'm condensing that gap. I'm making that gap smaller. So an NFL-sized running back can't really fit through there. A beautiful play, underrated play. I'm a huge fan of it. If you've been listening this long, uh, hopefully I've held your attention. A uh, couple more plays here at the end, or one more play, excuse me, at the end, that uh, is, is the best play that he made all year, the block kick. I believe that kick would have put the Colts up 28-17, I believe, or 28-25, I don't know. It, it would have basically won the game for them, right, in my memory, if my memory serves. I broke this down on my other channel. I, I'll do so now for a moment just because maybe there's people that are, you know, interested in it. Calais Campbell's right here, and this is this is all by design. You know, it's not just, oh, let's line up four guys in one, two, three gaps because that's what's happening here. That's not just what this is, all right? Most of, the, most of these guys, you can see their feet are interlocked for a reason. Now, they can do that because they're huge people. They're wide people. By by already pre-interlocking their feet, they've shortened the edge. But you can shorten the edge when you've got human beings that are this wide all the way across. And you can see the types of guys that they're putting here. So if you're coaching high school or, or, or youth football or, you know, whatever, you maybe aren't pre-locked with your feet. Maybe you're foot to foot. Now, us in high school, we were six inches. So this, this foot would have been here. And we would be stepping down. You know, everybody would be stepping down. They've already pre-done that. So the Ravens have got to basically wedge through this line, and they do a beautiful job of it. I think this is Washington, and I think what he's doing is he's, I think he's attacking this tackle, if memory serves. It's been a while since I talked about this play. And Calais, or excuse me, not the tackle, what the guy that's not his tight end, Washington is, and he's trying to dislodge him. What he's trying to – and then Calais Campbell is, is clubbing with his outside arm so Calais Campbell's trying to move this tackle this way. And I believe Washington's trying to take this tight end. Or he's a tackle lined up at tight end 73. And he's trying to move him backwards. Now he's not going to move him five yards back like that arrow there. He's just trying to get him back as far as possible to dislodge this foot. So watch what happens with his left foot. That right there is the reason why this kick gets blocked. Now, now it's also because Calais Campbell's six foot eight. Got great explosion, great awareness. You know, that that's what the play is, but 
But I'm telling you, the play behind the play is that bad step by this guy and then absorbing the blow, not being ready to take a shot from Washington. It's an underrated play from Washington who is clearly not trying to block the kick. All he's trying to do is dislodge this guy and we successfully get this foot out of there. Look at all the other inside foot, inside foot, inside foot, inside foot. All right, uh, I believe you had the snapper. Here. Let me double check that so I don't say something. Another stupid thing. Yeah, you got the snapper there. So let's pause it. Inside foot, inside foot. Those guys are down to their knee. He's down on his knee because Calais Campbell made a great move. You've got to give him credit for this move. It's a great play. And he's done that before in his career. Awesome, awesome move. Kind of created by his alignment, whereby it looks like we're going to do something similar here where Calais is going to dislodge him, you know what I mean? And we're going to do what Calais Campbell ends up doing this play. We might try to do with Matabike and block it here, but that's not what we're doing. The screener is this guy here. When I say screener, he's not really a screen. He's a Mack truck just trying to knock that guy back. Hopefully I explained it in a way that makes sense. I kind of lost track of myself there. It's a fun-ass technique to see people comp, um, execute in, in live time. I'm not, not necessarily in an NFL game. I'm talking about you know the coaching experience that I have. Uh, one defense that I coordinated one year. Not, not by me in terms of the block kicks. They block 14 kicks in one year. Um, I had a role in it, but the head coach, um, who's a great special teams guy, had a big role in it as well. We blocked extra points. We blocked field goals. And we blocked punts. You guys let me know what, what you think of Calais Campbell. I think he's an amazing football player. At 35 years old, is he as good as the guy who had 14 and a half sacks one year, 10 and a half sacks another year? No, no, he's not that guy. And then do we need to draft a three technique or a guy who can play in a three or a five? Yeah, absolutely, we do. We do need to draft a second round guy, maybe a third round guy somewhere around there, depending on who's available, definitely. And rotate Calais Campbell, definitely. But I think when he's healthy in 2000, when he was healthy in 2021, he was a hell of a football player. And, and showed a lot on film, and I showed you some of those games. You guys let me know what you think of Calais Campbell's re-signing, what you think of my film study breakdown of some of his play, so, and, and specifically how I broke down the kick there at the end. Not many people give you film study breakdowns of special team stuff, and I can do that for some other Raven stuff if you wish. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the comments section. Appreciate you all checking it out.